Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Ag Forecast for South America, brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. I want to take a moment here to take you to the IMEA website and show you, the uh, first of all, the harvest progress for soybeans. Let's go down here and take a look at the latest data. So if we click on this, we should be able to see the harvest progress for the report that came out last Friday. So I know this data came out a couple days ago, but it's still worth taking a look at. We're at 60.47% uh, harvested in Mato Grosso a year ago. We were at 22.26, the average is 48%. And of course we um, are above average on the, on the five year trend, but we need to see how fast we're getting this um, corn crop planted behind it. So I'm gonna come over here to the corn crop and look at the seeding rate or the planting rate. And the latest report's gonna show us here that uh, yeah, we're pretty far above average at 57% uh, compared to 20.9% a year ago. Now the idea behind this is just to take a look at where things are compared to a year ago, and I also wanted to do this. I went back and I reproduced a map from January 24th to February 13th, that kind of two and a half week time period there, um, where we were, actually, actually three weeks now, that looked at uh, how things were finishing up because a year ago, we were extremely wet in Southern Brazil. There were some places in and around, you know, this part of Paraná, for example, and Rio Grande do Sul, that over that time period picked up over a foot of rainfall. And this caused some major quality problems with the soybeans harvested here. We were also extremely wet right at the heart of Argentina's main growing area. And the reason why I bring this up is because that same time period this year is much different. Our wettest conditions are by far to the north here, and we've been very dry, for example, along the Paraná River throughout places in southern Brazil. So it's a major shift from a year ago. And what we want to do is we just want to use that information to try to understand the differences so we can put it into a forecast. And the first thing I noticed was this. Last year, from the 24th of January through the 12th of February, the MJO was really spending a lot of time here over this part of um, you know, of, of the Pacific. That's MJO phases seven and eight. And you say, what's the significance of that? Well, that is not a phase that suppresses rising motion here, which meant we had a normal monsoonal circulation. Well, this year, this is where the MJO was, much more strongly focused over a little bit farther to, to the east. And what we got was a lot of rising motion north, see it there? But this gave us subsidence to the south, because if the air's gotta go up somewhere, it's gotta go down somewhere else. So that's one big difference. The other difference is in the ocean temperatures. Already a year ago at this point, we were seeing some warmer conditions showing up here and our La Nina was very much still out here in the central uh, Pacific Ocean. We contrast that to this year and our La Nina is very east focused. We've talked a lot about that as of late. And we know what that causes. You know, When you have those cold ocean temperatures in January and February, right up next to South America, it tends to be drier south of that line. Okay, that's just the correlation. It's not strong, but it tends to be drier south of that line through southern Brazil, Paraguay, Uruguay, <clears throat> excuse me, and over into Argentina. It tend to be wetter here. And that's important to clue in on because the pattern certainly looks like that is going to be the case moving forward. I mean, I just watched an animation here. Let's let this play. This is the last seven days of precipitation. Very heavy rain on that stalled out boundary here. We had a weak front come through over the weekend through Argentina into southern Brazil, but it was very scattered rain in northern Argentina and into southern Brazil. I, I just wanted to play that for you quickly because we need to see this and take stock of how things have been. So I would like to go north to south. We're going to begin in Mato Grosso. If there is a place that has had what I would call ideal conditions, it is Mato Grosso. 30% of the crops grown there. And this little dry swath in through here was, as we've talked about, ideal for picking up on harvest pace. Since then, pretty normal rain. So you can see that the slope of that line matches average. <clears throat> Why it's below average is because of this drier time period in through here. Let's go from there east over to Goyas, okay? Now in Goyas, we can see that it was very wet throughout the beginning of January drier time period here, but they've picked back up toward normal precipitation since then. From east, I'd like to now head south. Why don't we head down to Paraná? Now, it has not rained in Paraná since the 6th of February, and they flatlined here on precip, and you just saw that. The storms broke up before they got into Paraná. But a couple of bigger events here at the end of February, excuse me, end of January, and the very beginning of February helped to recover some of what was lost but there's still a deficit of over five inches. And also in the state of Paraná, we look at the temperature profile during those drier time periods, extremely warm conditions. So this was kind of, you know, the, the added effect of the heat on top of the lack of precipitation. Now from there, let's go back to precipitation and go even farther south into Rio Grande do Sul. 
and outside of a couple of heavier rainfall events, which weren't much, I mean, look at the, the color bar, or the, excuse me, the, the, the y-axis here, uh, we're still sitting in a very sizable deficit, which means the drought in southern Brazil is still quite real. Let's keep going farther south of there to Argentina, over toward Cordoba. Outside of this one big rainfall event, we've had very little since then. And just to make a point here, the temperature profile during that time period, before that heavy rain came through, at the end of the drought, before we got the precipitation, we hammered that crop with average daily temperatures that were in the 90s. That meant that the afternoon heat was well past triple digit. Now, since then, you can see the temperatures have favored cooler weather, but a lot of damage was done, I think, to the crop up to that point. All right, so let's take this and kind of see where things are going. And it starts with the MJO. If a year ago the MJO was here, this year it's over the Indian Ocean. It's going to move from phase, well, it's really almost in phase two now, but through phase three, four, and five. And we talked about what the implications of this could be. And I want to come back to that because we know that phase five brings in drier weather north. And what I'm concerned about is this. We go into phase five over the next couple of weeks. If it takes another month, maybe a month and a half to come back into phase five, if we end up back here in phase five at some point in April, that would bring drier conditions in when the monsoon is trying to slow down anyway. And this could be a major impact on the safrina crop, slowing the monsoon down early just with the timing of the MJO. So we gotta watch that carefully. Now currently it's right out of phase two, which is why we're seeing wetter conditions exactly where that correlates to us. So I'm impressed with the overall pattern here. There's a stalled out front in this area. So going from Minas Gerais to Bahia and into Goyas and Tocantins, we've got above average precipitation, quite a bit above average. In fact, two to four inches more than normal. Mato Grosso still sitting right on normal through the next 10 days. We're still a bit drier south, although better scattered storms come through here. But then from the southern part of the Paraná River Basin, that's an area that is going to continue to see very dry conditions moving forward. I'd like to show it to you by looking at today's 12Z European model run. And what you're going to notice here as I play this through is that going through Tuesday into Wednesday and now here toward Thursday, some scattered showers north, scattered showers and storms, excuse me, north in Argentina, but much of everything else is sitting on this stalled out frontal boundary here hitting, for example, Minas Gerais. Now we're going to watch as we get into Friday, now playing into Saturday, and then into Sunday, maybe a better chance of a front sneaking through Argentina, setting up better rain maybe over Paraguay, getting into pockets of southern Brazil. But our story remains the same. So much of this is going to be scattered rainfall, not the, the heavier rainfall that we could get. So we just come back to this map and kind of take it in here as to what we think the pattern is going to look like over the next 10 days. We're basically adding drought back into regions that have suffered through it earlier in the growing season. So we've not made the full correction to a different pattern to help relieve that precipitation. So do, does that ever happen? Well, as we look out there into week two, the models are now wetter in parts of Argentina, which is here, Paraguay, and near normal in southern Brazil. But this is expected. Remember I told you the MJO coming over to phase five, we know historically goes drier in this area. And as we anticipated in last week's videos, I said, watch for this to expand. And the MJO being the more dominant factor is allowing that to occur. So it's going to happen now. Does it then happen again in, let's say, six weeks? Because if it does, that could mean a shutdown early of the monsoon and possibly hinder that safrina crop. Right now, looking out over the next four weeks or so, we see that this area is drier north. And we're going to favor drier conditions throughout much of Brazil and Argentina's growing area. In other words, the likelihood of being overly wet at this point anywhere outside of Brazil's eastern growing areas is limited. The model trends have been that way. The meteorology sets up this way. It has to do with the East Focus La Nina, the transition of the MJO. So a lot about this forecast does make sense to me. And I guess what I would say about it is we've already done some sizable damage to the crop in southern Brazil, Paraguay, Uruguay, and Argentina. Um, the forecast coming forward here isn't going to be corrective of that. Uh, it may not make it as bad as it has been, but this is certainly not going to be the kind of situation where we're remedying or, or relieving the area of substantial drought. And I think that's what I want to make sure the point gets across uh, to you all tonight. So I appreciate your attention. I'll give you another update on Thursday. Thanks.